Okay, so I've mentioned that we can solve equations, quadratic equations, by factoring. Okay, but before I get there, let me first just try and explain something using the following idea. Say I'm thinking of two numbers. I'm thinking of a number x and a number y. And I tell you that you must guess these numbers. And I'll give you one more clue, that when I multiply these two numbers, I'll get 0. Okay, so when I multiply them, I get 0. Can you guess my numbers? Well, let me give you one more clue. Okay, I'll give you multiple choice. Is it cho choice A that both values are 0? Okay, let me just put it as both 0. Okay, is it number B at least 1 is 0? Okay, so either x is 0 or y is 0, or is it z uh, c, none of them is 0, or is it question d, don't know. Okay, well, think about it for one moment. Which one of these do you think it is? Hopefully you went with B. At least one of them is zero. Why? Well, because we know that anything times zero is equal to zero. So if X is zero, it doesn't matter what Y is, this answer would be zero. If Y is equal to zero, it doesn't matter what X is, it would be zero. So one conclusion that we can make from all this is that x is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0. That's the only conclusion we can make. And this, this holds true for brackets as well. So for example, if I had bracket 1, so I have a bracket, doesn't matter what's inside the bracket, okay, and I have a, another bracket, so I'm multiplying two brackets with each other. Okay, so I have one bracket times another bracket and I get an answer of zero then the conclusion I can make is that either the bracket one is equal to zero or bracket two is equal to zero okay so one of these two brackets will be equal to zero so if I put this for you directly into an example let's take it as this example okay I have x plus 1, that's one bracket, is being multiplied to x minus 5, and we get that the answer is 0, then I know either the one bracket, in other words, x plus 1 is equal to 0, or the other bracket, the x minus 5 equals 0. Because if I get an answer here that's 0 and I multiply that 0 with this whole bracket doesn't matter what this bracket equals the answer will be 0 or if I find a value for x here so that this value minus 5 is equal to 0 then this whole bracket will be 0 and multiply that whole bracket and it doesn't matter what's in this bracket the answer will be 0 so what do I get well I get that x can be equal to negative 1 because negative 1 plus 1 will make this bracket 0 or x can be equal to 5 because 5 minus 5 will make that bracket equal to 0. So now we see that there's two answers to this equation. Now that equation if I multiply out my brackets, can you remember how to do that? We get x squared 1 minus 5 gives me negative 4x 1 times 5 negative 5 gives me negative 5 is equal to 0 so if I have this I know that if I substitute x with a negative 1 I will get 0 on the left and the right or if I substitute x with a 5 I'll also get 0 on both sides okay so let's test that I put in negative 1 squared, I get positive 1, minus 4 times negative 1, okay, negative and negative will be positive, that will be plus 4, so 1 plus 4 equals 5, 5 minus 5 will give me 0, well done, it works, how about if I substitute 5, okay, well, 
If I put in a 5 there, I get 5 squared is 25. Minus 4 times 5 is 20. 25 minus 20 gives me 5. Minus 5 gives me 0. So here I got the two answers. And how did I get it? Well, I had to have gone from here into the two brackets. In other words, I had to have factorized. Okay, so let's go look at our um, questions that we had before and try and see if we can use the same idea there. Remember we had before that x squared was equal to 16. Okay, and then when we took everything to the left hand side, in other words subtracting a 16 on both sides so that it's equal to 0, we got x squared minus 16 is equal to 0. And now on the left hand side you can see we do have the ax squared plus bx plus c, but we have no bx term. But what you do notice is that this is the difference, a minus, of two numbers, two terms, okay, and both can be written as squared. So this 16 can be 4 squared. And hopefully you remember that that makes two brackets, one with a plus and one with a minus, okay, and 4 times 4 gives me the 16, so there we go. And don't forget, equals 0. And from here we can see, okay, now we know two brackets are multiplying each other to get 0. So either the 1 bracket, the x plus 4 bracket is 0, or x minus 4 bracket is equal to 0. And then from here we can see this will 0 if x is equal to negative 4, and that will 0 if x is equal to positive 4. And there we get our two answers and you re you'll remember that it was easy to find those two answers in the beginning by asking what can I square to get 16. Okay, let's just look at the next answer where we had no solutions. So remember we had x square is equal to negative 1 and we found it impossible to solve this. Okay, to find a number that we can square to get negative 1. Well, if we add the 1 on both sides we get x squared plus 1 is equal to 0 so that we have our ax squared plus bx plus c format equal to 0. Again we have no b term so we, it would have helped it, since we have two terms if it was the difference of two terms but it's not. You can see there's a plus and that's not the difference of two squares and we can't find two brackets to, for, for this uh, quadratic expression. However, that does not mean it doesn't have any solutions. At this point, we all we know is that we can't make two brackets. Okay, so we'll look at another method to test does it actually have any solutions. Finally, let's look at the other question that we had. We had that x squared plus 1, if I take a number and I square it and then add 1, I want to know is it possible then to find another number or take that number and double it and see if they are the same. What number can I square and add 1 and get the same value as when I double it? When we take everything to the one side, in other words make it equal to 0, I subtract the 2x on both sides, I get minus 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Here I have my ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0 and this can go into two brackets quite easily two very nice bracket actually x and x what can I multiply to get 1 and when I add them together I get negative 2 well it's negative 1 times negative 1 is equal to 0 now I see two of the same brackets and what happens is I get x minus 1 is equal to 0 or x minus 1 is equal to 0. So here you see that the two brackets equal both 0 but they're the same brackets. So this one will be 0 if x is equal to 1 and that one will be 0 also when x is equal to 1. All that that means is that it's the same value. x is going to be equaling 1. So we have one solution to this equation. And that are a few examples of how to solve quadratic equations by using factorizing.